Hello everyone and welcome to the Story Each Day podcast. Today's story is called How to Become Alive and I wrote it on August 16th, 2014. I really enjoy this story because this was eight and a half months through the project and at about nine months through this project the story started to become a lot more imaginative. I think I started to reach this point where I was really sort of reaching for something outside of just your normal mode of thinking when it came to storytelling. So this story was sort of the beginning of of those types of stories that were really imaginative, and I hope you enjoy it. How to Become Alive August 16th, 2014 I floated into being, like lightning from the sky, like a snapping of fingers. The only problem was, I didn't know what either of those phenomena were, because I'd only just been brought into existence. I found myself sitting in a gray room, lit with grimy office fluorescent-like lights that seemed to come from nowhere. It was all quite strange, and I reeled in my recent creation, trying to figure out what the hell was going on. Welcome to existence, pre-birth assignment division, a voice said, as if it was its mundane day job to greet recently created beings. We're pleased to announce that you'll be granted an identity as a life on the earth. I blinked and looked around. The walls lit up like windows into other rooms, and an identityless figure appeared. It seemed friendly enough, and without having interacted with any other being, or experienced fear or familiarity, I sat, studying it as it appeared. Where am I? I asked, not quite sure what language I used, or even if I used a language to speak at all. Don't worry about that, the figure said sifting through time and space to find an available identity for me. Right now, you're nowhere, but in just a minute, you'll be somewhere. Places and people swept around us, whipping past us and blurring together into an ocean of identities. I stood from my chair in awe. Let's see, it said, sorting through images and scenes as they flew around us. This one looks pretty good. What do you think? What is it? I asked, still dizzy with my recent creation. Well, this identity is a female. Parents are Irish and English, and you'll be born in 1933 in North America, in New York City. Don't worry about those details, though. Whatever we assign you, you'll be in the right place. I studied the identity. Thousands of other faces swirled around us, forming a tapestry of colors, shapes, and sounds. How could I decide? The figure made a noise like a laugh. You can't. You're a blank slate right now. No identity, no name, no background, no assumptions, expectations, predispositions, inclinations, or nationality. How could you make a decision without any of those? I walked further into the maze of identities, looking at all of the faces that I could be. But don't worry, it said. Soon enough, you'll have all of those things. You'll be able to make a decision in a snap. I don't know, I hesitated. What is it for? The voice fell silent for several seconds, and I opened my mouth to ask again, but it answered confidently before I could say anything else. See how they all weave together seamlessly? It asked. I nodded. That's what they're for. Each intersecting identity creates a knot with the other identities and affects another decision further on down the line. See that one? One of the identities lit up. It was a vibrant strand of people, places, voices, thoughts, and ideas, all coiled up into an intricate swirl of life. Yeah, I said. That one's awesome. It's connected and tied to so many other ones. In fact, I've hardly seen any other one like this. 
incredible. The identity veered closer, and all of the intricate, seamless ties became tiny interactions and decisions, complex and beautifully crafted. But at the beginning of the thread of identity, a brutally dark splotch marred the woven cords of circumstances. What's that? I asked. That? Rough times. I don't know. Something dark and uncomfortable. I turned my eyes upward, along the future of the thread of identity. It grew bright and alive, weaving in and out of thousands of other strands, spreading light as it went. This one, I said. I'll take this one. This one? All right, my friend. You got it. 2016 is a good year. At least you have the internet. What's internet? I asked. You'll find out when you get down there. Now close your eyes. I shut my eyes and felt myself simultaneously draining like a bathtub and filling like a water balloon, then shattering like a mirror. I heard everything at once. Every voice, scream, laugh, cry, whisper, yell, and giggle as loudly and as softly as I could. Then I heard nothing. I opened my eyes and breathed in for the first time. So this story was a lot of fun to write because so many people like to hypothesize about a life after death, but there are a lot fewer stories about what life might be like before life, which is sort of an odd question to hypothesize about but it's really interesting. And so it was sort of, it was a lot of fun to take this imaginative view about what that might look like. There's actually a really great little short story called The Egg by Andy Weir, who's the author of the, the book The Martian. The Egg is an interesting story. Um, I actually, I didn't read it until after I had written this short story, but in Andy Weir's story, the character dies and then goes to this sort of afterlife and talks with this figure about uh, being reincarnated. And so it's, it's almost a similar dynamic in that this character is talking with a figure who is outside of existence uh, and yet still exists, and they're sort of talking about the dynamic of being a human. One of the interesting things that I do in this story is I separate an identity from... A person, which is not really possible, but that's one of the fun things about stories is that you can do impossible things. But I think separating a person from an identity actually allows you to see something deeper. There are all these different things that make us who we are, whether it's the language that we speak or the technology that we are around when we're born or the city we're born in, or the year that we're born. And yet, um, there's something deeper than all of those things that makes us human. Um, and I think that that's one of the things that I that gets me really excited about this story, is that there's this character who hasn't been born yet, and they get to sort of think about and decide what kind of life they want before they have any of the things that would help them make a decision in that context. So obviously it's a fantastical situation, but it's really interesting because when you start to pull these things away and think about these things in a fantastical context, it starts to sort of shed a little bit of light on what it actually means to be human. So all of that to say, no matter who you are or where you're listening from, hope you enjoyed this story, and I hope that you'll tune in next week. Thanks for listening. A Story Each Day was written by me, Nicholas Voigta Seiler. Music in this episode by Blue Dot Sessions and David Seste. You can read more of these stories, purchase the collection, or subscribe to hear updates about my upcoming novel by going to astoryeachday.com. Thanks for listening. <laughs>